How's it going guys? Today we'll be taking a look at Arch Labs Linux. So I'm right here on the official website, archlabslinux.com. You can take a look at it for yourself, but we're here, we're going to take a quick overview uh, and we'll get right into the distro itself. So as it says here, it's inspired by Bunsen Labs and it's powered by Arch. So Bunsen Labs is a different distro, which I haven't really taken a look at. Uh, but apparently, as it says here in the quick background information about the distro, it's heavily influenced and it's inspired by the look and feel of Bunsen Labs. Um, so, yeah, this distro is pretty new. It just came out, like, I think two days ago. But, um, yeah, that's why we'll be taking a look at it. And, um, yeah, so here are some highlights of Arch Labs. So it's got a minimal desktop environment. It's easy to install, it's based on Arch, it has minimal applications installed so it's not bloated, same thing for the themes, it's got a welcome script to install additional applications, window and desktop managers, um, it's got available window manager and display managers including Openbox, XFCE, i3, BSPWM and Awesome Window Manager. Uh, you can switch between panels and docks with ease. You got Conkey and Tint 2. You got Arch Labs Dark Open Box and GDK3 slash 2 theme set as the default theme. The icon, so there's a custom icon set for this distro, which is the default. So applications and scripts are included, and you, as we can see here, default applications. Thunar, File Manager, Termite, Genie, Firefox, Audacious, MPV, Skippy XD for win window management, and it's keyboard driven, or driven, my bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, right here there are the forums, which you can take a look at here. Announcements, discussions, help and support, assistance, artwork, bug reports and all that type of stuff. And going back to the homepage, um, if you want to download and install this distro yourself, you can go to get, and then you can just install it right here. So yeah, so uh, I'll be booting it up right now, so yeah. All right, so here we are in Arch Labs Linux itself. And before I say anything else, I just really want quickly want to say that uh, it booted up very fast. I'm very impressed already with this distro based off of uh, how fast it booted itself. Uh, along with the fact that right now, as you see, the RAM usage is at 760-ish. Um, and this is because I'm recording and whatnot. But when I initially booted into the system, it was at like 300 and something, like 360, 350, somewhere along those lines. Uh, so this is a pretty lightweight distro. Um, also, you're greeted here with a welcome screen, which you can read it, pause the video and read it if you like. Um, so yeah, so let's open up the terminal real quick. And you can see the nice logo here. And as you can see, the window manager is Openbox. Uh, and for those of you who haven't tried Openbox or uh, other window managers such as i3 or awesome window manager whatever you know uh, I do suggest you give it a try because uh, it's a nice experience you know it's nice to try things out and that's a great thing about Linux is that you have all of these options so definitely try it out and try this distro out um, because this is uh, pretty new uh, and yeah you know uh, I really like the whole overall theme of it um, but the first thing we'll take a look at is right here you can see that there is a conkey and it gives you some basic system information uh, and the thing I want to note are the shortcut keys right here um, which will be useful and uh, in case you guys don't know which most of you guys probably do uh, this right here S stands for the super key which if you are using a Windows laptop or computer, keyboard, whatever, um, 
it's basically the key that has the Windows logo on it. So if you just press that, you can uh, get the launcher, which this is very useful because it's really like quick and easy to access. Uh, you can access newly installed programs like OBS, just how I installed it, uh, or like a, a browser, you know, um, or even settings, for example, like the display settings. So that's very useful. Uh, super uh, space give you this menu right here, which you could just right click on the desktop and get it. And then you have a bunch of other ones. Um, I think the terminal is pretty, pretty useful. Um, so yeah, so you have your shortcut keys right here. You have a very nice panel which has different workspaces. And you can scroll through them with your scroll wheel on your mouse. You have the menu right here, which you have your three main, like, mm, well, not categories, but like browser, file manager, terminal, you know, the main three that you'll be probably wanting to access. And then for the actual categories, you have them right here, which I won't really be taking a look at or discussing. Um, any of the programs installed or any of the programs right here in the category and the categories themselves because I don't find um, it necessary because the um, main website already kind of explains what it comes with and as you would expect it's a minimal installation you pretty much have your basic programs basic needs if you want anything else you can of course install that yourself and that's the great thing is is that you know it's not bloated it doesn't have an overabundance of programs unnecessary programs you pretty much just have the main ones that you need one browser you don't really need anything uh, anymore uh, mail reader <clears throat> and then for also multimedia you have um, one music player one video player and you're good to go but of course if you want to you know, download a specific browser or whatever, you can, of course, do that yourself. So right here, we have a clock in the middle, along with the calendar. <clears throat> I got temperature here, and it tells you when it's high or critical, when to worry. And right now, it's yellow because it is a bit higher than it should be. Um, but when I first booted into the computer, it wasn't this high. But then again, I should open up my laptop someday and clean out the dust. Then you have updates here, which I personally will not be downloading or upgrading anything. Wi-Fi, and then for sound, you can uh, press the you know sound keys. And as you can see, the icon changes color itself when it's too high or when it's in the middle or when it's low. And if you mute it, it just straight up says muted. So this is pretty nice. You can also adjust it with uh, the scroll wheel. Also, if you right click on it, you can take a look at your volume control and settings and whatnot. So yeah, so that's basically, you know, right here what you're taking a look at uh, right now. Um, but if you right click on it, you have a whole bunch of settings here as well. Um, so here's the installer, which is um, at least it seems to me to be pretty nice and, and basic as they promised. Um, I haven't used it yet, so I wouldn't know about that. But based off of my um, the impressions I have so far, I would assume it is. Um, again, you have some quick access here to like, you know, other programs and like places, you know, if you want to access specific folders and whatnot. And then you have here preferences. So if you go ahead and click on a open box and go to the settings graphical user interface, you can take a look at these uh, different title bars. Has a nice variety here uh, and you can install new ones yourself. So this this one's actually the um, the initial one the the one that it, that comes with the distro itself. I I chose this one myself. 
um, because I was tweaking a, a little bit of stuff here before beginning the, the recording. So you can change to whatever you like. Let's just stick with this one. Uh, and then right here to the left, you have appearance, windows, move and resize, mouse, you know, some other settings here that you can um, adjust to, you know, that deal with the behavior of windows, of mouse actions, all that type of stuff. So um, I won't be going too much into detail. Of course, you can pause the video and take a look at what settings are available or, you know, you can, of course, test it out yourself. <clears throat> so right here, we also have content, which if we go into the settings, you can have the compositing either disabled or enabled, which both have their own benefits. Um, there are videos about that as well, but there are pretty much basic settings here as well for shadows or fading or opacity for example you can change the menu opacity which I think it would be nice to make it a, a little bit transparent let's see here doesn't really oh, okay there we go let's just keep it at that or for inactive windows or for the frames themselves and then you have some advanced settings here which you can enable vsync change the back end and you have some other settings here that you can take a look at yourself as well. So let's save and quit. And right now, as you can see, the menu is actually a bit transparent now, which I wouldn't recommend having it too transparent because if it's against a white background, um, like for example, you can change the, um, the wallpaper right here and it comes with some nice wallpapers but there is a bright one right here. So now, not only is the conky kind of hard to see, um, but also right here, the menu is visible, but if you make it a bit more transparent, it's going to be hard to, to see it against the background like that. Uh, but the conky itself, um, of course, it isn't affected by the um, compositing settings. Um, but speaking of conky, there it is right here. You can uh, choose different conkeys, which actually, never mind. Well, actually, I think I remember that if you, um, yeah, if you click on it while holding Alt, you can move it around. But for some reason, I can't move it right now. So I'm not really sure how to um, how to remove the conkeys. You can well, you can um, change where it's located, and you can also change the size of it yourself. But I don't, I don't think yeah, I don't think you can move it around with just the mouse itself. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep the conky, you know. It's helpful anyway. But I remember that, let's see. Yeah, I thought that maybe deselecting it would, oh, there we go, there we go. Wait, what did, what did it say anyway? Hold on, I just wanna see really quickly what it said because I didn't really read the pop-up. Oh, close all running conkeys and exit. Okay, okay, so that's why. There we go. So if you dislike the conkey or if you think it gets in the way, if you like simplicity, then you can easily remove it. Okay, so let's go back to preferences and we have the poly bar right here, which if I click restart, you can see it's this. Uh, and so there are two types of panels. So we have poly bar and you have you have, um, okay, so this just puts one on the top. Okay, so we have polybar right now. Uh, and if you want to change that, which I think this already looks 
amazing for you know for the whole theme and just as a panel I think it looks really nice um, but if you want to choose tint 2 you can do that as you can see everything looks different so um, you can go ahead and click on tint 2 settings and it kind of uh, shows you what they all look like it gives you an example so if we go ahead and click on one of these and click the check mark and click yes as you can see the panel changes you got the time and date being on the right side you have your open windows here along with your is that the workspace can't really move from one workspace or not to another uh, let's see this is the web browser which there we go the icon just popped up all right so we have uh, settings here so this is how to change up the panel if you'd like so uh, here are the settings and as you can see you have a lot of categories right here um, and there are so many stuff that you can change about this this is a highly customizable panel panel uh, you can change a lot of stuff about it um, and yeah you can change the colors of it which let's say let's see if we change this to red for example and apply that oh this is for the tool tip there we go um, So let's see which one exactly is for the panel itself. Current background on mouse button press. Oh. Border color. Let's, let's try this. Nope. What is this? Let's see. The border color of the current background. Okay. Well, anyway, you can, um, you can take a look at this for yourself and kind of play with it. I remember that you can change the uh, the background. You can also adjust its position to the top if you're used to that. Also, if you click on compact, you can see you don't have the extra space that you might not want. Uh, you can uh, also adjust the size, the height of it. Um, oops. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's see here. Yeah, that's really that's really weird. Let's see the panel. There we go. Now it should work. There we go. So you can adjust it to whatever color you want. Um, and you can also make it as transparent as you want. I'm just going to leave it like this for now just to showcase, you know, uh, what it looks like uh, with the different colors uh, and whatnot. Also, you have uh, different panel icons or items. Like, for example, if you want to add your battery, you could just click on this and click apply. And it, also, if you like your clock, maybe to the to the right here, you can just click up, and then you can adjust that as well. Um, so that's pretty nice. Taskbar. You have many options here. Um, also the appearance. Again, you have a lot of settings here. Like I have never seen uh, any other settings like this for, for a panel. Like this is crazy, but um, yeah. Like I said, I'm just not going to go over every single setting because that would just take uh, too much time. And also right here where you have your browser, you can uh, remove that if you'd like, for example. And you can also add, let's say you installed Chromium or whatever, you can also add that right here. And also here it is, the volume icon, um, which now appears here. You have the clock which I'm pretty sure it's going to let you put it in the middle because I know a lot of people like that. Um, but I'm not sure how to change that specifically. 
you have the system tray, battery. Again, you can uh, change like what the mouse does to it. You can change the way it looks. You can change, you know, just the overall behavior of all of these different options right here that you have. So this is this is great. Um, and also, let's say that you kind of messed up your, um, you know, your panel. What you can do is you can right click and you can click on reset. And there we go. You have it just as it was. Um, but let's say you want to have the default panel. Uh, well, you go back to preferences, you go to change panel slash dock, and you click on setup polybar, and there we go. You have your default panel. Wallpaper slash background, we took a look at all the kinds of wallpapers that are available here. This looks pretty decent. Um, I'll just change things up, you know, to kind of, um, you know, to kind of show what uh, options are available. Uh, the one thing, however, that I don't like is, let's say you put the title bar above the, um, above the panel. Like, as you can see now, I can't, like, I'm trying to click on it, but I can't really move it. So. Uh, what I have to do is right here, I have to click on close. Um, that's the only thing that I don't like. Um, and also another thing that is kind of like, um, like for example, let's open something. Uh, kind of inconvenient is the fact that there is no minimize button. But I mean, that's fine. I'm pretty sure you can change it and uh, add a minimize icon appearance settings so you can have the default theme right here so if you don't really like having a dark theme you can just click on one of these which there are three arch labs themes so there's one that's dark one in the middle and the light one you can also change the icons to different icon sets which i personally like the arch labs ones i think that the default icons are pretty nice uh, fonts, you know, settings, uh, which if you take a look at the menu here and take a look at, oops, uh, settings, let's see here, settings editor, there we go, oh, actually, never mind, uh, let's see where it was, settings manager, there we go, you have all of these uh, settings put into categories and also Right here, you can change your mouse um, acceleration and the theme, which there aren't many installed. Like all of these are the same, but of course, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know how to install themes by yourselves. Power settings, audio settings, and then you have the settings manager right here. You can actually access it quickly. So that's that for preferences here, system root terminal, file manager, gparted for partitioning. This is actually very helpful and very nice. You have the home page, the forum, the Reddit, Google Plus, knowledge base. Like this is amazing because like when it comes to distros and you know just Linux in general, there's just like it's all a community, you know, and like there's always stuff popping up. Sometimes there's an error it's always great to have access and a, a nice community that helps uh, keep you know whatever distro you're using alive and helps uh, you know solve whatever problems because there are some distros that uh, you know the developers um, may be from a different country they may use different languages and you know it's going to be kind of difficult for people who only speak english for example uh, to you know, find help. So this is very nice. And there are also guides, guides to Openbox, guides to Tintu or Polybar, right? To Conky, Rofi or Rafi, I, I don't know how you pronounce that, I'm sorry. Neofetch, you know, this is awesome. Um, so th this is definitely very helpful and very nice. And then you have Keybinds, which you can take a look at all of these right here. 
there's definitely a lot. And um, yeah, you know, you can lock the screen and exit. So um, this was just a really quick overview. Like I said, like I, I don't really want to go into detail too much about specific stuff or about unnecessary stuff for that matter. Uh, I just want to show you guys the, you know, options that you have available, um, you know, just the typical stuff you may want to see when you're just checking out a distro without having to actually install the distro. Uh, and yeah, you know, so far I can definitely say that I am happy with this. I really like Arch Labs Linux. Uh, I would recommend it to people who love not only Arch Linux, but also Openbox. It's a really nice window manager and um, this has a lot of, you know, pre-configured uh, themes and like settings and everything. So it really gives you like a very nice experience, uh, you know, just right out of the box, just getting right into it. You have everything looks very nice. Um, it's very lightweight, very fast. So, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend this distro. Try it out. Oops. <laughs> Try it out. If not, install it. Uh, and yeah, hope you like this video and have a good one.